Welcome to another episode of Fact Fiend Focus. Uh, as with the previous ones, this topic has been voted on by our patrons over on Patreon, link in description. And uh, mine won again, two months in a row. Clearly best ideas, what can I say? The one that won this particular one is fictional technology that would revolutionize our world. Uh, so I'll, I'll go a little bit into more detail about the kind of things we're looking for here because most people are gonna just suggest the obvious stuff and I think that doesn't create a very interesting discussion. Yeah, but then that means they're right. It does mean they're right, yes. And that, that's what's more important. You've got to post the answer that everyone else wants to put first. And get the most likes and the most responses. Okay, the thing that kills Reddit once you've spent more than like three months on it. As you can see, I've got Carl with me. <laughs> and uh, Lucas is here as well. Hello, I just hit my microphone. Uh, Nisha will be joining us. It's just she's dealing with a family issue at the moment, but she'll be here soon. So I don't know whether the image, the us will rearrange on here, depending on when she gets here, but it's fine. Deal with it. So I told these guys beforehand, like the, the criteria I want for this, I don't want people just suggest something overly revolutionary from like a super far advanced science fiction universe. Unless it's like something like the minutia of something small. Uh, what I'm more looking for are things where it's sort of a, a simple bit of tech or some new discovery or something which would overturn things in like ways that people wouldn't foresee. Yeah, like the idea of it's like it's this thing that's basically a throwaway line, like a James Bond gadget. Joe, you know, it's like, oh yeah, we invented this, and we use it to like you know, like a laser that's small enough to cut through steel that we put onto your watch. It's like, why is that not in the in, like in technology? Why is that not being sold to industry? Like a laser powerful enough to cut through steel that you can micro silence the size of a watch. I think a good example that I don't think anyone will have picked is the goo gun from Ant-Man. Because that's just seen as a failed experiment. And yet, the ability to <laughs> the turn somebody... The most dangerous somebody, weapon. Yeah, the most dangerous weapon we've ever seen. Anybody can just turn into goo and be thrown in a toilet. Yeah, because I think I've talked about that before. Of like, hey, like he says, oh, it's a failed weapon. All it does is instantly incapacitate and um, basically delete from existence any organic matter, and it's like, we can use that to kill the Hulk. That, that's the thing, like, what happens if it's David Cross versus Thanos, and he just goes, boop? Well, keep in mind as well, like, he says, like, oh, we want to get the Ant-Man suit, because we want to, it's the ultimate, like, assassination tool. So's that! <laughs> yeah, it's this the, tiny little gun that's this big that can instantly wipe out anything and anyone. Is because that not great? It, it basically deletes all evidence that the person was ever there. It's like, yeah, you can't shrink down and run out of the room, but if you walk in, shoot them with that and pick them up with a tissue, it's like, where's the president? I don't know. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. stuff, stuff like, like that. The, the movie doesn't even, the movie or the TV show doesn't even draw attention to how revolutionary this technology is. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm actually going to start us off with something because the one I've got is fairly simple. And um, it's something that appears in loads of different universes and things. But the one I want to draw specific attention to is the one in Spy Kids. And it's when they first get to the safe house in the first Spy Kids movie, and they just put a, like a, th a, th a container into the microwave, press a button, it just appears as a full meal. I want, I want that technology, like the amount of storage space it would save, just being able to keep like full meal and the time as well. Like it's like microwave meals, but they, I assume they're like dehydrated, so they're kept in like really small containers, and you could have this this plethora of different meals because I think they have a burger is the one that they present. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look like a bad burger. It looks like I'm a decent pretty, burger. Isn't it like a full McDonald's meal, like, specifically, I think? It, it McDonald's is pretty, much, is pretty much dehydrated to the point he looks like that anyway. Have you ever seen how quick it is? <laughs> I think, like, a TikTok went viral a few days ago of, like, oh, yeah, um, here's how quick it is to make a McDonald's burger. It goes from being frozen to cooked in 42 seconds. Yeah, that's why it's fast food. Yeah, but people are amazed by it. And it's like, you don't, every second this burger's not in your mouth is money McDonald's is losing. So midway through that little discussion there about uh, fast food, Nisha has popped in. Hello. Hello. So yeah, w I uh, I suggested something that appears in a lot of different um, science fiction or the media, that kind of thing, but it's always like a bit of a throwaway. It's, it's the way that um, you can have food that can be stored in like tiny little capsules or tiny little boxes and you put it into a machine or a microwave or something and it just pops up and it's a full meal. And then we were talking about the fact we basically have that just not as advanced like we have dehydrated food has been a thing for a while and the fact i can go into my cupboard right now and i have like a pod that's this big and i put it into a machine and a full cup of coffee comes out well then they have the things with for the astronauts as well like the space food the uh, space yeah food, yeah the so they've they've and like camping as well the camping their meals always have to be very compact because you have to carry a lot of them with you also mentioning like 
capsules of food, I, I'm i sure I'm not the only one that just immediately thinks of uh, Capsule Corp. I was literally <laughs> yeah. thinking that in my brain. That's yeah. It, yeah, that's it taken to its extreme. It was this weird, like, negative space sort of thing of, like, you are... I, I've seen, like, have you ever seen, like, those, like, vacuum bags? They're great for moving food, uh, moving food, moving clothes when <laughs> yeah. you move in house. Which is pretty close to something. Like, I know Capsule Corp is like a, cu- a capsule this big and a spaceship flies out. It's not yeah. quite yeah. there yet. Yeah. Just throw it in and a spaceship or even a house just pops out. In the Ant Man films, we mentioned like the little goo gun. But just in the second one, where for a joke, like Michael Douglas just goes boop on a pizza and it goes like four times the size. It's like, why is that not a thing? Oh, so you've solved world hunger. Yeah, got it. Well, I mean, it depends whether or not expanding the food alters the actual, uh, like, calorific and stuff content. Well, of they eat food. it. They do, but it, it might be the same. Like, it might just be a pizza just stretch bigger. Like, inflating. Like, is it, is it 99% air? Yeah. yeah. Does it does it actually create more? Because it can't really create more matter, can it? Oh, it can, because that's literally what it does. Think about when Paul Rudd gets big. He weighs more. That doesn't mean, actually, by their rules, if the idea of making him small but he has the same mass means he's super strong, when he's massive, he should be weak as fuck. That's the one, yeah. He basically solves world hunger for a joke and they never bring it up again. Because even say, <laughs> I'm thinking, like, because you have bloody, like, like Janet, of like, yeah, we've, we, tr- we try to think of, like, ways to use pin particles for good. You've done that. Done. All you need to do is just say, like, we're going to send one apple. One apple to like you know like the third world country. What does that do? And then just James and the giant peach happens. But even if like I, like I said, like the making it bigger doesn't increase the like the, the calorie or whatever value of it. But it literally does because we see that with everything else that gets big. Even if it didn't, you could still use it to do, to do things like expand the size of water treatment plants so it can handle more water. Ship like fifty fucking thousand of them over on a boat and then make them all massive. Like let's well build tiny little houses. Or even the opposite thing of, like, if you've got big things to transport, turn them small. Yeah, because we, we might it might take a long time to make the technology to build things so tiny and intricately, but we have the technology to build it regular size and shrink it. Uh, like, the people in the movies are only as clever as the people writing them, and it's like, they're supposedly writing super geniuses who've got, like, these vast intellects and can, you know, paranoid to, like, um, the extreme and plan everything out to the advance, but like the best they can think of is grow big, grow small. <laughs> because that's what they can think of, so that's what the characters think of. When if you think about it for like just a split second, the characters should realistically be able to solve almost every issue imaginable. Going back to like Spy Kids, I was gonna say, you know, not necessarily the little micro food. What about the thumb people? <laughs> like they create a sentient life that's like doing, you know, busy work. Men- menial tasks, yeah. Yeah. They, they create that actual just like th- so that they're not other people are they I think I think they are just the created the people are machines aren't they like golems sort of I guess yeah I think yeah. the people are machines and the um, the like fluglies or fleelies or whatever they're called uh, fluglies they're, they're people the actual people transformed yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah that was my that was my simple submission nothing too complicated because I uh, I'll be honest I, I couldn't think of a specific like m- micro technology but that's why we have other people here. So I'm going to go... So has it got to be micro? No, no, not necessarily. <laughs> I, I mean, micro is... Yeah, we mean like micro in the sense of like it's a small thing that's overlooked in the film, but its applications are so vast and they're just never explored because the writers didn't really want to. I just thought of some interesting fictional technologies. Well, I guess well, let's fun. move over to you then, Nisha, and let's uh, expand no, on what no. you were thinking. So <laughs> what, no. what was your idea? What were you thinking? I My thought went to... Um, I mean, there'd be a lot of complications with this, but I feel like... In the modern world, well, you'd, you'd have to um, fix a lot of bugs, and this is far in the future. So in Futurama, when they have the um, test tube, the tube transports, because like, how much easier and faster could you get shit done if you didn't have to walk places or like wait for buses stuff? But obviously, there's a lot of issues with that, as you see in the actual show. <laughs> Think about break your neck. <laughs> yeah, if you look at it though, that's just essentially a really well-funded public transport system that's free, because that's the thing. It's essentially just a public transport system that is available for use for everybody, is free, and accesses like has such vast reach across the city that it's um, uh, just effortless to travel between locations. But like, just if you actually break that down, that's just a public transport system that's really well funded, which should be, which shouldn't be a, fu- a futuristic far off idea. That should be reality. 
that makes like the idea of a traffic jam way more horrible. <laughs> just again, stuck behind people. Like, <laughs> just like, oh. just, just human centipede getting recreated. <laughs> But like fucking a hundred kilometers an hour. Yeah. That, that's an interesting topic, though. Futurama obviously is a, a show set in the future. What technology from that do you think they just brush over like it's nothing? Like they've got the drinks. Th- there's the drinks that refill. And it's easily it's robots. It's robots. Bender. Like by the end of like the season, Bender can do everything. And if you look, he's got no rope. Like he, the joke is that he opens up his like inside compartment. And there's nothing in there. How? And he runs for like eight million years. He has a power source Ooh. that lasts for millions of years. Well, he, he runs off beer, yeah, technically. But he's able to he, function. He runs after, on a combustion engine. But he functions after literally thousands of years. Like they have a joke where they leave him like a thousand years in the past and he functions fine. And he has <laughs> AI that doesn't corrupt after a thousand years of inactivity in the desert. Like my PlayStation doesn't work after like being sat on a dusty <laughs> shelf. I, I, that aspect of it is actually quite interesting. Not the robots themselves, but the fact that they're that like. Durable. Um, yeah, durable. What are, they, what are they made of? I, mean, I know that Bender's like 40% tungsten, 40% iron, 40%... Well, like, obviously humans can get augments in that universe as well, because like, we get mecha Hermes. Yeah. Hermes yeah, upgrades yeah. various parts. Like some things are not meant to be Cyloned. But like, no, the yeah. one I was talking about, the drink, where they, whenever they're out drinking, they finish their cup, press a button and it refills. How does that work? We already have that though, because um, a friend of mine went out for a brunch with him, and he was telling me about when he was in the Netherlands. And something they have there is you go to a table and you just have a beer tap at your table. And you just you prepay and just pour your own beer. It's basically that. Or like you know, those surge things for um, Guinness where you put the glass down and it fills from the bottom. I guess the ex- the extreme version of the transportation thing, like the tubes with them, is the teleportation. Like Obviously, that's one of the ones that I reckon would come up in the comments of like, Star Trek beaming, like that kind of idea of movement. And then you'll have someone saying the thing that someone's going to say of teleportation is actually terrifying because it doesn't teleport you, it just rearranges your atoms. And every show you've ever seen where someone teleports, the moment they step into a teleporter, they die. Think of a teleporter as a fax machine. So you cop- you don't send the actual image, you send a copy of it. That's what a teleporter is. The teleporter is a fax machine for people. The only way it could potentially work without murdering you is if it dis- disassembles your atoms and takes the exact same atoms somewhere Well, the Willy Wonka else. one, yeah. Wonka yeah. version. Yeah, yeah. That's the only, the only teleporter in fiction that ever... And again, that's a joke. He invents <laughs> teleportation. That'll be Willy Wonka's got the food one as well. Maybe this whole video is just about how Willy Wonka's invented everything. Well, that's what I mean. Like, the only teleporter in any piece of fiction I'm aware of where they actually don't have the teleporter just kill you is Wonka vision, because he says it takes all your parts and then puts them back together. But it puts you back together smaller. But then you fix that by taking it to the stretching machine. It's like I've, I've said this before, the only possible way that then, that you can do it is that the mind would have to be transferred in motion. Like that you'd need to find a way to transfer it whilst it's running so that your perception does not change. And that's obviously so far into the future. Like it's just easier to copy people. I, I know I know it's not particularly doable right now, but it is just easier to make a copy. That is the thing as well, isn't it? Of like, you know, the way that the world works of like, the cheaper option would be picked. So if like, a company's presented of two options, like, we can transfer the person specifically or just copy them and make them and, die. And no is one that, will notice that's the cheaper. Yeah. No one's yeah. gonna notice the difference. Because the moment like that, that it happens, they cease to exist. And it's been dealt with in like, a few bits of fiction recently, like in Invincible. Like the whole thing, like the Mauler twins. That's the idea behind them of like, they have to specifically mess about with their short term memory so they don't know that they're the clone. I was wondering whether there's a another technology from fiction that is another transport one but is less extreme than tubes. It's, it's the um, the cars from iRobot. Oh yeah, yeah, the automatic cars that just run on the roads and go sideways. It's not specifically the wheels. The round wheels that go in every direction because that was based on actual, cause people don't know, like every car company has like a bunch of researchers who are like trying to figure out what the next like big tech advancement's gonna be. So they asked Audi, what your researchers think cars will look like in a hundred years? And they said, well, what we think is gonna happen is like self-driving cars will become a thing, but legally they're never gonna not let there be a human behind the wheel. And we think the future for wheels will be these big round wheels that can go in every direction because they're safer. Because basically your car is just magneted to the road and it can go in any direction and in a crash, you can maintain um, uh, stability and friction. There's a car now, because my, my stepdad has one, um, like it's a work car, which can self-park. 
and also he can control it from outside the car you know if like he's parked somewhere and he can't get in because someone's parked too close he can literally use his um like keys to bring the car out a little bit so he can get in so like, that, remote that's, control that's pretty... real cars are already on the market yeah, yeah. i can't wait if that just hit someone and then the, the car it's case. so slow it's so slow it has parks. to be doesn't it <laughs> it's like, so it... funny another thing that the car does as well is like if he's on the motorway and there's a car like say if we're on the motorway and someone in front suddenly starts to slow down the car can like sense where the car is and slows down itself like it will Mm -hmm. not let you hit anything (laughs) it basically stops you from hitting things what about if i want to hit someone carl doesn't want to buy the car i don't know if you you can override it but it's there as in like no you you can't literally hit someone so (laughs) Hmm. but i'm always a bit like i think it's cool but i i don't always trust technology because it doesn't always work I believe in the existence of a world where everybody is in self-driving cars. It's mm-hmm. the middle ground that scares me, where some point, people yeah. are and some people aren't. Because in yeah. a world where we're in self-driving cars, roads are now scale electric tracks. So let's move on to Lucas. I'm going in backwards order on my screen. So Lucas, what idea have you got for us? So I misconstrued what you were like, the way that you were trying to rein us in a little bit. So I thought you were asking us to like, bring a technology that we currently have to the table and utilize it in a different way to like change the world i mean that that, that's an interesting angle yeah right now there's obviously a lot of arguments about ai and ai is not actual ai it's like the way that people are talking about it right now it's machine learning um that people are talking about like ai and it's like why are we using it to try and put like creators out of jobs and why are we not like programming little robots to go and clean up litter and clean out the seas? And why are we not just making robots based off machine learning that can go and do menial tasks out the environment? Like that would change the entire planet. Do you know this, the answer, Lucas? It's cheaper to hire a person to do that. And also, yeah, it's just why would we put our money into something to help the planet and not to make profit? Mm-hmm. It's not profitable to clean. Like, cleaning up litter, Lucas, isn't profitable. But even just AI in general, it's like they're training it on shit to, like, replace authors and writers. It's like, why don't they train it on, like, tax returns and have a robot that does my taxes for me? Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> like, why are we getting, like, people cheating at their, like, exams in high school instead of just having a machine that I can, pr- I can just put in? Here's how much I earn. Here's all my data. It's trained and just have a one that's trained on like your financial statements that does your taxes for you. Not that that wouldn't be great, but again, that is another thing that's putting people out of jobs. Whereas, like, why aren't we putting? I know it sounds bad. Why aren't we putting volunteers out of jobs? Of like the people who are volunteering the time to go and do things for the environment. Why are we not like finding ways for robots to replace that work? What's, you have that amazing. Like, it's, it's obviously it's asked in like a tongue in cheek, but it's one of those things that say, you know, why are we automating? Like, you know, just individual labor. Like, there's a really easy way to save a lot of money. Why don't we automate the job of a CEO? (laughs) Because, like, this one person costs the company, like, the equivalent of, like, 15,000 low-level employees. Why don't we automate that job? Generally speaking, people, you know, say that CEOs of massive conglomerate companies have to have, like, you know, complete ruthlessness because they can't think about those numbers as actual people. Is that, well, a robot would be great for that. Yeah, a robot already does that. I've never thought about that before, but that is literally a massive solution that any company could take up. The person in charge, just get rid of all of your upper management and just replace all of them with AI and keep your creatives who you pay fuck all to anyway. Well, that's what makes it so funny. It's like, and that's why it was asked in jest of like, why are we trying to like put all this effort into, like, you know, automating like a single, like a cashier? How much money does a cashier really represent? Or how much loss does a cashier represent to like Tesco? Compared to how much money they pay their CEO, who all they do is go on the news and put their foot in the mouth. I think um, the idea of like utilizing the artificial intelligence, or, or as you said, the machine learning we have in a different way, I, I'd never really thought about it. But yeah, it is a bit weird how they're trying really hard to take over creative stuff when that's not what machines are going to be good at. It's because the people making them are fundamentally uncreative and they, they like... You, know, you always see, don't you? It's like AI artists, and I don't like using that term. But like when they do that thing, like look what I made. It's like well, you didn't. It's the same energy as like people who share a meme. It's that. It's like they want the that boost of like that endorphin hit of like creating something. I mean, people praise you for it, but they don't want to put the work into doing it. 
But uh, I mean, the other way, the other way of looking at it is like, oh, what, what actual AI? Because actual AI is terrifying, and I love those stories of like, oh, well, Facebook got really scared because like two AI started lo- like speaking in a different language to each other or whatever. Yeah. Another stories that I love and I talk about all the time, like just the concepts. One of my favorite films, Ex Machina. And it has a deleted scene. I will never stop being pissed off that they removed. Where Ex Machina throughout the entire thing. People don't know basic plot of Ex Machina. Anyone who's seen it? Um, a, I think he's a tech guy. He's brought into just a tech guy. Yeah, yeah. He's brought into this like remote house where this other tech guy lives, and he's, he's told yeah, yeah, and he's told to spend time with an artificial intelligence machine and try and even though she's visibly a machine. And try and connect to her. I can't remember the purpose of it, but he's trying to connect. It's basically to her. It's like it's the next step of the Turing test of like I've created an AI, and he, I'm, he explicitly tells him this is an AI. It does not have human emotions. It is a machine that's learned from the internet and like input. It's best approximation. It is not human. It's it, but you, I want you to see if it can trick you into thinking that it is. And the the way the film as the film goes on, the machine tricks the guy into like letting it free. And it's based on a really old um, uh, thought experiment I adore, which is um, the real fear with AI is not... So they always say, like, Skynet, you'll lock it in a room. Mm -hmm. Like, if Skynet gets out, it'll, like, you know, infect the world. And it's like, it's not... The worry isn't that it get out. It's that it convince you to let it go. That's the and that's <laughs> terrifying, and that's what it does. It's like some SCP shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the real fear isn't that you'd like it'd escape and get into the internet and launch all the nukes. Is that it would convince you to let it go. And that's what the film explores of like, and then he falls in love with the machine. And then the moment that he lets the machine out, he just stabs him and runs away. But there's a, there's a deleted scene from the film where you see the world from the robot's eyes and it sees the world as just ones and zeros and just like a mess of electrical interference. It's basically an alien. Because there's so many people, if you go look at reviews for that film and stuff, there's loads of guys who are like, why did it betray him? I thought it loved him, and it's like, you would have fallen for it too. And be honest, yeah. we'd, we'd all probably fall for that yeah. if the yeah. robot looked like yeah. a hot lady or a hot guy. Yeah, there's a, there's a film that I feel like doesn't get a lot of um, a look into is Transcendence, which is the one with, uh, it's Johnny Depp. The plot of Transcendence is that a guy builds this technology that allows him to, once again, it'll be duplicate or copy his brain into a machine. But then once he gets access to the internet and he's able to spread out across the entire world he starts to essentially uh, jump start humanity's uh, like technological advancements and it gets to the point where it just basically looks like magic and the whole film is about is this the same person is this the good guy that was trying to build this machine at the start or is it a corrupt ai and it needs to be stopped and that's the whole basis of that plot and i always i always like that idea of the the discussion being like is this is it still human is it still a real person? At what point? Like it's it's transcended, like the name of the film. It's transcended beyond human limits. So why would it give a shit about human problems? We need to kill it because it's it fundamentally does not align with our own values because it is a machine beyond our comprehension. Like it is to us what ants are. Yeah. Like why would like do you give a shit when you step on the ants? Well, of course you don't because it's like when you're building a, a house, do you care if you step on an ant? Well, no, because I'm building a house. It's like, now imagine that, like, you're the ant, and AI is the uh, the boot. Uh, right, let's move on to Carl. Anyway. I reckon yes. I can see I can see in his eyes he's got something juicy for us. But not <laughs> juicy per se, but I um, I, tried to, I tackled it from two directions, where it's technology that would change our world, and realistically should have changed the world in which it's introduced. And I've been re-watching Daredevil, in the lead up to like you know Daredevil coming back for um uh, like on Disney Plus, and does anyone remember the plot with Madame Gao? Like that doesn't involve like the weird ninja dragon. The only thing I remember is like she's like putting heroin in shit. Yes, she's making heroin, but she makes a special new kind of heroin, where the it's basically super heroin, and what it does is it's um one applied by a patch. And the reason it's super heroin is because it, every time you take it, it hits like you took it for the first time. So basically, like, it, you never, ever get used to the drug. And there are two things there that would make her a multi, multi billionaire. Where she legally, without having to just, like, you know, sell super heroin and get beaten up by a man dressed like, you know, 
Daredevil. She's <laughs> created a way to get drugs into the system that no longer requires needles, mm -hmm. which basically completely eliminates any risk of things like, you know, um, uh, disease transmission. She's also created an opiate that doesn't, um, uh, you don't get used to over time. So basically right there, she has solved the opiate crisis and the uh, pain management issue because people don't know the general issue with pain management is that your body eventually gets used to the pain management and you have to keep taking harder and harder drugs just to, like, you know, stave off the pain. You have to get stronger stuff and then the stronger it is, the more likely you are to get addicted. And that's another thing they say of hers is non-addictive. So it's, it's non-addictive, but it always gives you the hit of the first time you take heroin. They've solved the opiate crisis and created just basically a tool that will revolutionize pain management, which is just such a huge issue in the medical thing, like people dying of cancer, for example. Of like, I'm not going to lie, though. It would be kind of weird to like go into a ward and everyone's like just on super heroin. Well, that's that's <laughs> essentially what like pain management is like oxytocin and stuff, yeah right? right it's essentially just a drug it's just you know it's just legal and like you know very uh, we're guessing not so much in america that's why the, the crisis for it but yeah she's essentially created and instead they wanted to sell in back alleys instead of just legally selling it and revolutionizing the like you know the medical industry while also having a complete monopoly on your new designer drug that completely um uh, upends the previous way pain management was dealt with you know we we, we can make so much money because we'll take over the drug overworld like on the world sorry and it's like okay well yeah being a big drug dealer is going to make you a lot of money but you know what's going to make you even more money being like the biggest um the single biggest pharmaceutical giant distributor of like all pain management in the entire country or the entire world yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, just both elements of it from, like, you know, the drug itself to the way it's administered of just being, like, you know, a patch that it's non-invasive. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's easy to apply. It's safe. There's no risk of, like, you know, shared transmission. It basically eliminates the idea of, um, uh, like, needle sharing, anything like that. It reduces the cost because all it is is, like, you know, shipping that to, like, you know, places where it's needed. And that would revolutionize, like, our world. And just the fact that rather than just sell that and become legal billionaires, like, no, let's sell drugs. Let's corner the heroin market in Hell's Kitchen. It's like, what? Set your sights a little higher, Madam Gow. Isn't it also, like, the, the point is that she's this head of, like, a massive tea company from China that's, like, like literally already got billions upon billions. It's not like they're underfunded and can only you know, make these tiny amounts to sell in Hell's Kitchen. It cracked me up because I was watching that and all I had in my head is that scene from Austin Powers where, like, Dr. Evil comes back into the future and he finds out that in his absence, they started, like, um, at Starbucks. <laughs> and, like, they're talking to him, like, okay, so in your absence, Dr. Evil, we started Starbucks. We sell, like, you know, which is a really great, like, bit of organic advertising as well. Like, we started at Starbucks. We sell, like, you know, good re coffee for a reasonable price. We currently sell in excess of like four billion dollars a year. And Doctor was like, "Well, let's just kidnap some nuclear scientists and threaten the world." It's like, "But we make like eight billion dollars a year. Any? Why do we need to do this?" Like, but I love being evil. Every villain is always like, "Oh, I want to take over the world." It's like, why? Why would you want that responsibility? But they also always have advanced technology as well. Everybody's <laughs> villains has massively advanced tech, and they're like, "I'm gonna take over the world." It's like, well, just sell your shit. It's the Spider-Man thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you you develop like you've perfected gene splicing. You could use that to cure cancer. It's like, but I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I've developed a lizard formula that regrows your limbs, but you might turn into a lizard. And rather than just sell it, cause that's the thing. That's bad. But I'm guaranteeing there's people out there who've got legs missing who would willingly sign up for human trials for that. But rather than just, like, say that on the news, he just, I'm going to turn all New York into lizards. It's like, you know how people would sign up to become a lizard? If you've gotten to the point where you can regrow limbs, but, you know, the, the side effect is it'll be a lizard, surely you can just do some more tweaks to the point where yeah. it wouldn't be a lizard anymore. Because... It could just be human. <laughs> but here's the thing as well. Because if you go on the, like, you go to the government and you say, well, I've developed a formula, it regrows limbs, but then you turn to a lizard. <laughs> Can I get some funding for my project? The problem, like, yeah, well, that sounds quite promising. <laughs> Both the ability to turn people to big lizards that are bulletproof and regrowing <laughs> limbs. If we can separate out both sides, we <laughs> can with two perfect evil. products. Lizards for evil. 
I guarantee if you went to like, you know, someone's like, okay, the lost the family. Military life. application. So, and yeah, we can As we can well. regrow your legs, but you'll be a lizard. You'll walk again, but you'll be a lizard. What do you what do your wife think? It's like, well, my kids think it'd be six of a lizard dad. Let's go. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm pretty sure as well, like in that in that film, it's like Peter Parker knows the answer to like fix the formula and figures that out. And it's like, okay, so instead of like punching the guy and sending him to prison, again, could you not like tell him, oh, together we can work on this and we'll fix the problem of like the lizard side effect? It's basically what they have to do in like when they all come back in like the um, MCU, isn't it? Of like. They basically have to acknowledge the fact that you were really shit at dealing with your villains. You just punched them and sent them to prison. When but like these are all just mentally ill people, like, you could have helped them. They were all also geniuses who revolutionised their fields, and they were ignored. Like, uh, like Doctor Octopus. I love that Doctor Octopus. He's like, okay, so here's I'm going to try and make um, a sun that'll give us unlimited free power. How do you control it? Well, here's the, this um, robot octopus arms that require no power are strong enough to lift several tons um can like basically he's in those alone would be worth billions and he says mm-hmm. i invented these to help with my work sell those <laughs> <Yeah>. sell those <laughs> it's a it's four prosthetic limbs like it's extra arms that fuse into his nervous system he's but they created require no battery power limbs. either <laughs> yeah that's Imagine nice. like that in like if you made it into an exoskeleton rather than like something that had to fuse to your spine. Well, like imagine that in like construction. Yeah, work. but that's what he says. I invented this to help with my work. Sell mm-hmm. that. <laughs> Sell that to would, the government. They wouldn't make, but he wants, wouldn't make but he really wants the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. <laughs> but then he doesn't even hold it in his hands. He holds it in his octopus hands. It wouldn't make for interesting films if they just invented stuff and sold it. That would. <laughs> It wouldn't, no, no. but it, it's the question of why didn't he? Why did like why does no one question when he has that and they treat it like a toy? Like they have to have these weird leaps of logic where you just suspend your disbelief and like, yeah, of course you just use these for evil and not just sell them. <laughs> He's also created AI as well, because those arms have AI. That's We're why he has the inhibitor AI, chip. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's he puts an inhibitor chip on it because the artificial intelligence can take over his mind. He, gloss, he, again, he glosses over that and says they have a rudimentary artificial intelligence. Isn't that a problem? Not with my chips. Like, so not only have you invented AI, you've invented a limiter for it that works. Which is when you're looking at that and all I can see is like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you've already yeah. invented something that would make you a billionaire. Because when he's talking about, I need more funding, sell those! That's the problem as well. <laughs> he says, thank you to Osborne, like Harry Osborne, for funding my research. Sell those robot arms to the government! Like you said, construction. Think of all the mm-hmm. things that could be revolutionized by just having those things, like construction, working in like you know nuclear testing facilities, space, yeah, space yep. exploration. Yep. They work anyway, and they seemingly have battery life that is near infinite, because mm-hmm. you never see them run out of power. And like the amount of force they can exert is enough to like rip apart like a bank vault. There's, there's ten things I've done today where octopus arms would have been helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get back. Guess what one of them would be. It's so dumb. But that's the thing, then it's like, when he talks about I need funding, why? Because I'm planning to be an evil octopus man. <laughs> it's just superhero media is just so full of all that stuff. Like, we, the one I always bring is the Oscorp. Like, the joke, and I, I hope you can put the clip in if you're editing this one, Brad, of just like when they go to like Norman Osborne, he's got the goblin glider. And like, the military guy's like, we've seen the glider, the glider sucks. What about the goblin formula? It's like, well, it works, but it's kind of shit. Okay, we're going like Star Labs. And they show Star Labs and it's the guy in the fiberglass coffin hovering one foot <laughs> off the ground. And the goblin glider comes in and destroys that and a fortified military bunker in one second. And apparently the military saw no potential military applications for a personal sized glider that can destroy a fortified military bunker in one quarter of a second. <laughs> they never thought that would be useful in war. He made a grenade version of like the gun from Mars Attacks, and everyone's like, eh, he sucks, go to Star Labs. Go to Star I want to see a guy hover four foot off the ground. Can we mention the final one? Just the one more. And it's, why does Tony Stark never get the seizure ray? Why does oh, he yeah. never... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Do you the thing Obadiah yeah, Stane uses? Because you can't even use the excuse if he doesn't know it exists. It gets used on him and instantly incapacitates him. And then throughout the films, they explicitly say Tony Stark is a paranoid weirdo, and every time he's threatened, he makes his armor react to that threat. 
And then a key plot point in Civil War is that two humans beat him up. It's like, get the seizure right. Just get the seizure thing on Bucky. And just... <laughs> They've presumably got very acute hearing because they're super soldiers. So they'd be even more affected by it. And here's the other one. When he's trying to like, um, you might say you don't want to use it against people because it's dangerous. The Hulk. And you might think, mm -hmm. well, the Hulk's super strong. It never work on the Hulk. In the Incredible Hulk movie, literally the only thing shown to hurt the Hulk is a sound ray. Mm -hmm. So the one thing we're explicitly told hurts the Hulk is sound. I'm fairly certain as well that Obadiah Stane is like, look at this glorious technology that literally doesn't hurt anyone. He also says as well, it was a failure. Yeah. He, even, he says to Kamala, we couldn't figure out a use for it. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, it incapacitated Tony Stark instantly. And you've got earplugs that like magically That's the stop thing, it so you can't even say it's you. dangerous because like, just put an earplug in. Imagine like... All you need, give SEAL Team 6 that thing and those earplugs, every combat encounter ever solved. Well, I feel like this is going to be one of those ones that is going to be, the comment section is going to be full because there's so many different technologies that people could think of and come up with. So I'll definitely be having a look through. So if you've got any ideas of things that fo follow this theme, and as we said, don't just go with something super obvious. Go with something that's a bit more niche. That has maybe <laughs> that has uh, maybe like as Carl said, like, different connotations even within its own universe of how it's been underutilized. Yeah, just think of like when Ultron's making fun of like Captain America. You got a shield, and then you like fast forward to like Black Panther. It's like you know if you put like vibranium in a little ball bearing, you can use it to cure broken spines. It's like what? Yeah, this is the part of the video where we mentioned that uh, the reason we can do this is because we have been supported on Patreon. Yes. So, uh, yes, we're going to be reading out the names of the patrons who are on our VIP tier, and you'll also be able to see the names of the patrons on our supporter tier as well. So, our VIPs for November. Uh, thank you to Susan from South Africa, Patrick Bratson, Benjamin Fridman, Shay Pinder, Sarah Paul, Lachlan Sims, Errol QC, well done, <laughs> thanks, Robert Robert, Binger, Kynan Plays Games, Popsicle Tart, Rotoscope, Andy Ellis, and a goo. Thank you to, I'm so sorry, Faini Saeed Aramethi, Kathleen Lynch, Doug Schnuglis, Richard Chisenhall, Amy Brundridge, Berriette N. Uranus, <laughs> JS, Tyler Mason, Fiora Lily, Fiora Lily, uh, Eric Toledo, Aaron Clausen, Bubba P, Lyndon B. Johnson, Hannon DOA Argove. I like that just someone called I'm Sorry got a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, and also Sloan Rockefeller, Andy Ruffle, Nesta Ailman, Sam Bartrup, uh, Chibisa Matawere, uh, Michelle Holloman, Michael Garavati, uh, Stephen Skyler Wolf, Dar Turkey 28, Onyxia, uh, Jacob Ersenbach, Harrison Rook, CD Bad, and once again a shout out to I'm Sorry. Yes, and uh, last but certainly not least, we have Brina Lawless, Countessa, Umbrella Otano, Jub Jub 366, shout out to my man Jub Jub, Kester Stutes, Kelleran, Sean Watson, all in lowercase, My Shoe Hurts, number 69, Ian Lures, The Boy Lampert, Impy, Zeran King and James Martin bringing up the rear. Cheers to all of those people there. Hell yeah. yeah that's another Fact Feed Focus wrapped up and we'll see you next month for hopefully something maybe a bit Christmas or festive themed. I think that'll be nice. Let's do a festive one. I'm going to make it about Easter. <laughs> Just <laughs> any <Thanksgiving>. holiday. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Bye bye everyone. Bye. Cheers.